When I say Foxconn, you think iPhone. And yes, Foxconn, or their real name is Hon Hai, is the world's largest electronics manufacturer. And this is an iPhone 1. Look, it still has Angry Birds on it, and it works. With automobiles becoming software-defined and electrified, Foxconn feels like they have a place. It's never easy transitioning to a new industry, and it's especially difficult when you're a Taiwanese company who has to deal with the geopolitics of neighboring China. But in this video, we're just going to look at their cars. The Hanhai Technology Group was established in Taiwan 50 years ago. Internationally, we call them Foxconn, a more friendly name for Westerners. They are the world's largest manufacturer of electronics. Nearly all of what they do is done so under contract to other companies, including Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony, and Xiaomi. In 1988, they opened their first factory in mainland China. In 2002, they established an independently traded subsidiary to focus on mobile communication devices. Now called FIH Mobile, they do far more than just slap together phones. They design, develop, and manufacture devices, everything from hardware to software, all vertically integrated. Very impressive. But you came here to hear about electric vehicles. Where do those come in? It has to do with their new business strategy, 3 plus 3, focusing on three transformative technologies, AI, semiconductors, and next-generation communications, and three growth industries, digital health, robotics, and electric vehicles. Making cell phones has been very good business for them, but it's starting to peak. In developed markets, pretty much everyone has a smartphone. In emerging markets, there is some growth, but it's in lower-end phones. Foxconn needs to find new product categories to continue its growth. And by the way, so does their partner, Apple. Since 2021, Han Hai has been teasing their upcoming EVs, pretty much showing what the final design will look like and revealing a few details. Let's take a look at the models and what we know. Foxconn rolled out the name Foxtron for its electric vehicles, and I like the name. It makes the connection to the parent company, and Tron was cool. But if they have their way, you will never own a Foxtron EV, just like you don't own a Foxconn phone. CDMS, Contract Design and Manufacturing Services. The vehicles they show are their reference design, a smart, open electric vehicle platform that other automakers can choose to use pieces of, or the whole thing for Foxconn to contract manufacture. They want to take the same business model that works so well in phones to electric vehicles. The best comparison would be to Magna International, the auto parts giant headquartered in Canada. They currently manufacture the Fisker Ocean at its plant in Hungary. Fisker worked with Magna on the styling and was able to select from a menu of off-the-shelf components and systems. Magna got into EVs when they started working with Jaguar to make their iPACE electric vehicle in the same plant. Foxconn realized this is a huge undertaking, more than they can do on their own internally. So they are building a network of partnerships and relationships to develop production systems. I'll keep track of them as we go through the vehicles. Model C is a compact C-segment SUV, thus the boring name. Exterior dimensions are the same category as the Tesla Model Y and VW ID4. Like the Model Y, it comes in a 5 or 7 passenger version. And like I said earlier, you cannot buy a Foxtron Model C, but you can buy a LuxGen N7. LuxGen is a car brand in Taiwan. It's owned by Yulon Motors. Yulon is Taiwan's largest automaker with plants in Taiwan, China, and the Philippines. No, I, I never heard of them either, but notably they contract assemble Nissan vehicles for select markets. The LuxGen brand sells gas-powered cars, and now they have the all-electric N7, which is the Model C reference design. Yulon and Honhai are 50-50 owners of Foxtron Vehicle Technologies, which is publicly traded, so them being the first customer for this reference design was to be expected. LuxGen has sold a few vehicles in other markets, but Taiwan is absolutely their main place to sell. The N7 is launching early in 2024 as a single-motor, rear-wheel drive with 230 horsepower. That's good for 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 7 seconds. 
The range is 314 miles on the NEDC test, a little less than the standard range rear-wheel drive Model Y. Now, keep in mind that the NEDC is not being used as often. China has moved on to the CLTC, which also results in generous range assumptions. Europe now uses the more conservative WLTP, and the EPA range test in the U.S. results in even more realistic and lower numbers. Charging is not particularly fast based on the limited specs that we have. The standard battery is somewhere around 67 kilowatt hours and LFP battery chemistry. No word on where they are getting their batteries from. When Foxconn first talked about the Model C reference design, they stated a longer range and faster acceleration. So the platform probably can offer more power with dual motor and a larger battery. But this is what LuxGen is initially offering. Technology appears to be good, with SAE Level 2 Plus system available for conditional hands-free driving, three trim levels, and a starting price equivalent to about $35,000 US. Sales will focus on Taiwan, but not China, not mainland China. In comments to reporters, they said that the Chinese market has too many EV manufacturers, too much competition. I agree, they'd be better off exploring other markets. The Model B is the smallest EV they've shown. It's the same general size class as the VW ID3, Volvo EX30, or the BYD Dolphin. I'd compare it to the Chevrolet Bolt EUV, but GM made a mistake and stopped offering that vehicle. The styling comes from the Italian design house Pininfarina, and it looks really good. Images of the red car are the prototype originally revealed. The blue car is the production intent version that was revealed at Hanhai Technology Day late in 2023. It features their latest EEA electrical architecture, enabling a smarter smart cockpit and intelligent driving control modes. Not much else in the way of specs for this good-looking EV. The biggest difference between the red concept and the blue production model that I noticed were the side view mirrors. The production intent ditches the camera-based side mirrors and displays for cheaper but less aerodynamic glass mirrors. I think North America needs more affordable EVs like this, but they specifically reference the India market on stage and reference Delhi's push to ban combustion engine taxis in the city to improve air quality. There is a lot of potential for an EV of this size basically anywhere around the world. Tesla needs to hurry up with their Model 2 to compete in this class. Fisker has their pair concept in this same general size category, and that EV has been strongly linked to a plant in Lordstown, Ohio. Formerly a GM plant, it was taken over by Lordstown Motor, maker of the Endurance Pickup, who then sold it to Foxconn to take over assembly of their trucks. Lordstown went bankrupt. Rights to the design were acquired by an investor who is trying to relaunch the truck. Meanwhile, Lordstown has a large assembly plant in the U.S. ready to make something. Fisker and Foxconn have announced a framework agreement to manufacture the pair, but that doesn't sound like a done deal. Many startup EV manufacturers are finding out the hard way that capital investments required to make huge electronic devices is difficult business. If only Foxconn could find somebody with deep pockets to make an electric vehicle with. Hmm. The production version of the Model B was driven on stage by Hanhai chairman Yon Liao and NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang. NVIDIA is the next partner in the mix for Foxconn. Foxconn's software-defined electric vehicles will be built on NVIDIA Drive Hyperion 9 processors. They will also use NVIDIA's next-generation platform for autonomous automotive fleets called NVIDIA Drive Thor. Some other automakers today are already using NVIDIA's previous generation called Orin. NVIDIA is just crushing it in automotive and in other markets. Foxconn and NVIDIA announced other collaborations not directly related to EVs, including the buildup of AI factories that will accelerate learning across a variety of industries, including autonomous vehicles. The Model E is only a concept for a flagship executive sedan. It was also designed by Pininfarina, 
Tesla Model S, Lucid Air, Mercedes EQS all come in mind as competitors. They claim it has 750 horsepower with 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 2.8 seconds. An executive sedan is designed around the comfort of the rear passengers, allowing them to conduct business or just relax as they're driven to their next appointment. Chassis systems for a vehicle like this would come from ZF. Foxconn acquired a 50% stake in the German supplier's chassis module group, seeking to expand their traditional business, suspension, and steering systems. Foxconn has shown prototypes of what looks like fairly traditional systems, but they are undoubtedly working on more advanced systems, steer-by-wire, and electronic systems to replace mechanical ones. An electric vehicle like the Model V, I shouldn't have to explain. It's it's a pickup meant to do pickup things. Mid-size pickups are sold in many markets around the world. It's just the big full-size pickups that are really a North American thing. They claim that this all-electric pickup can haul one ton and tow up to three tons. It has a cruising range of 261 miles, but EPA results would be less than that. Recharging from 20 to 80% in 30 minutes is, is fine, but not amazing. You can see a large sensor in the front of the truck. The presentation, they said it would have night vision. My guess would have been that those are LiDAR sensors, but they said it's night vision. The Model V was shown at their 2022 tech day, but no update was provided in 23. Foxconn says they currently have 14 potential customers that they're in touch with and 23 development projects being carried out. Foxconn led the creation of an industry consortium called MIH, Mobility in Harmony. And this is where the industry ties go really crazy. They want to create an open EV ecosystem to speed up the transition to electric mobility. And they have, uh, appears to be hundreds of companies signed on board, although to what extent it's not clear. Probably the most important part of an electric vehicle is the battery. And this is where Foxconn's plan are a little murky. The Model C is going into production as the LuxGen N7, and I was not able to determine who is making the battery. The MIH consortium lists LG Energy and Samsung SDI as members, both leaders in EV batteries. CATL and BOID are not in the consortium, both major manufacturers of LFP batteries. Foxconn has said that they would like to bring EV battery production to the United States to take advantage of the incentives from the federal government. Anybody watching this in Wisconsin? You're probably asking, what about us? Well, they specifically mentioned the mostly vacant building in Wisconsin that they have as a potential site to manufacture battery cells and then package them into modules for EVs assembled in Ohio. Foxconn has also signed an agreement with a Canadian company, Blue Solutions, to help develop solid-state batteries, which are the next big thing, but probably a few years off. So there are a lot of different paths Hon Hai could take to get batteries into their electric vehicles, but their main plan is still not clear. They previously showed the Model T, a mass transportation bus, Electric buses or e-buses are a large opportunity for manufacturers. You know, most places around the world have nice mass transit systems that lots of people use. Transitioning from diesel to electric can have huge immediate benefits. BYD makes e-buses, Hyundai does too. I did a video on electric school buses in the U.S., so check that out. Foxconn also showed off an electric delivery van, the Model N, at their 2023 tech day, this is another growth area for electric vehicles. Fleet managers know how to plan routes to maximize efficiency, and electric trucks can help them save money and reduce emissions. Foxconn has established a new company in China called Foxconn New Energy Automotive Industry Development. It reportedly will focus on electric motor production and other EV-related components. Foxconn and Stellantis, which includes the former Chrysler brands, have formed a JV called Silicon Auto to develop advanced processors for future vehicles. Legacy automakers are finally updating their electrical architectures to a more modern design that relies on just a few high-powered processors 
rather than the old way of many dumb, cheap chips with limited set of tasks. <sighs> That's a lot of partnerships to digest. But what should we expect from all this? Hun Hai wants to be in the electric vehicle business, but only as a contract design and manufacturing service. They need other automakers or aspiring automakers to strike deals with. LuxGen is a nice start, but they don't sell in enough markets. Fisker is more interesting, but they need to prove that they can survive long enough to make the pair. I worry that Foxconn's business model will attract too many startups with limited funding, like Lordstown Motor, and the results will be predictable. Amid the rumors that Apple is making a car, that would be a great partnership for Foxconn, but I'm not sure Apple will ever make an EV or that they would choose Foxconn as their partner. I totally agree that Foxconn should avoid competing in China. That market is too saturated with some very advanced electric vehicles, and quite honestly, what Foxconn has shown doesn't indicate that they can charge quicker or go farther or drive themselves better than the Chinese EVs already on the road. Foxconn would be much better off focusing on, let's say, India, Southeast Asia, Middle East, South America. And of course, they have two really big buildings in America to fill with something. I hope you learned something about Hun Hai, aka Foxconn. If so, give it a like and sheshe for watching.